All right, so hopefully you guys are doing well. Uh, hopefully you're having a good morning, afternoon, or evening. Part number 15. Did I tell you about, uh, about all the shark fishing that's going on around here? They caught one off Fintail the other night, and the boss sling shot it with a rifle. They were hauling it on board, and he shot it once more for luck. The pullet cut the line, and the shark got away. Sounds like a real fish story, don't it? We couldn't have liberty this afternoon because the Secretary of Defense was here. I guess they did not want to see what real sailors look like after a few beers. Sorry I haven't written the last few days. I've been pretty sick. On the way here, I had a cold, and it's really bit me hard with this heat. I would cough so hard sometimes I would throw up. Boy, you should see the lace work these people do. It's beautiful. Well, it'll be paid. It'll be here this payday, so I'll get you some. One third of the crew has gone to a mountain resort for three days. So far, I've missed out on those deals, but no more. I'm glad Mary finally made her first Holy Communion. What did Billy have to say about it? It's starting to get hot there yet? Sure wish I was there instead of here. Well, I finished my correspondence course, and this August I'll go up for third class petty officer. Sure hope I'll make it. Well, nothing else to write about, so I'll close. Write soon. I miss all of you. Oh yes, I haven't mailed anything. You have to sign away your life to do so. It makes me mad. Maybe later. Yours, Lewis. P.S. The picture of me with the girls in Yokosuka. The other one is in Nagasaki. How do you like the girl on the right of me, Pop? She went to take a picture alone with me, so I had to get the other beast out there, too. Ah, uh, these women. Oh, well. June 8th, 1954. Sorry I haven't written sooner, but I've been pretty busy. I never dreamed the Navy could get so much work out of me that they have in the last few days. While at Subic Bay, we sent 15 boats to the yards to be repaired. Naturally, let the, the batteries go dead, and I never carried so many batteries in my life. With each of them weighing 85 pounds, I can tell you I had really had fun. We left Subic Bay this morning and went to Manila. Only stayed there about two hours. Now we're underway for Hong Kong. We have about 20 or 30 women aboard. Naturally, they stay up in the officer's country, and you don't get to see much of them. I was wrong about the Philippines being well known for lace. It was embroidery. So I bought a so-called dinner set made of pana, pineapple fiber. It looks like a cut-up tablecloth to me. It has a large piece for the middle of the table and a small piece for each place, for six places. It has napkins and small pieces for the glasses to sit upon. It's a very light brown in color. I also bought a nutcracker. It's a woman, native girl. And to break nuts, she spread her legs apart and lay the nut between her thighs and close the legs. It works quite well. I didn't buy very much here because it was a boom town and the prices are sky high. I received my insurance policy today. As soon as I get the envelope large enough, I will send it home. I just got off watch down in the engine room. It was 124 under the vent. And between the boilers, about 140. It's so hot between them that you cannot touch any metal. We have about a thousand passengers on board, which me includes the Marines, Navy, Air Force, and Army. Received a letter from Jimmy yesterday. He's about ready to get out of school. Didn't have much to say. So Mary Lewis is quitting. Good riddance. I kick her in the ass as she left. My God, it looks like everyone's getting married there. Guess I'll have to look around pretty hard when I get home to be able to date. Well, I guess I'll close now. I'll try to write sooner. I'm sorry to hear the kids are sick. Hope they get well soon. Say, how's daddy? Well, write soon, miss all of you. Say, did you like the pictures? Love, Lewis. June 8th, 1954. Dear folks, well, here we are in Hong Kong. I went on Liberty last night and had real fun. It's not really what I thought it to be, though. It's really a very modern city. Of course, that's because of the British. Because this is a free port, you can buy anything very cheap. Well, here I intend to buy some clothes. Not many, just a coat or something, and maybe a pair of shoes. Boy, you have to really watch yourself here. Thieves by the hundreds. I would never believe a seven or eight-year-old kid could pick my pocket. But they can and do. Well, we leave here in two days and take the passengers back to Subic Bay in Manila. Then we'll come back here for several days and it'll be payday then. And I can buy a cashmere ladies' coat, which costs 13 U.S. currency. How would you like that, Mommy? Well, I'll close right soon. Love, Lewis. June 19th, 1954. Dear folks, well, today is Saturday, and we leave here, Hong Kong, tomorrow morning at 09, bound for Cebu, Japan. Boy, this is a really interesting part to be in. 
I've been hanging out at a bar at Loon Clock Hotel the other day, and a Chinese hit man had an argument with one of his five wives over a baby. Well, it finally came to the highlight when he pitched the kid out of a window on the sixth floor and then jumped himself. I got there after all the mess was cleaned up, and the girl told me what happened. The boy named Paul still had his watch when he went on the beach. He had it up to his elbows, and those damn kids still picked it off of him. I never dreamt of an 8 or 10 year old kid being such a good pickpocket. After they pick it, they go down to the street and try to sell it to another sailor for one or two US dollars. Last night I was sitting in the bar with this girl I knew and she started pointing out the reds to me. Of course she never said one way or the other about herself. She even pointed to a few British she swore and be damned if they were commies. When she got through pointing it out, she seemed like I was surrounded by the bastards. Well, I guess I should have expected a lot of them here in China. Say, Mommy, I bought you a cashmere coat. Of course, it was not pure because there's no pure cashmere in Hong Kong. It's white with three quarters length sleeves, and it's about 55% cashmere, the rest wool. We'll go back to Hong Kong in September. I want Pop to send his measurements for a suit. I get several different materials such as cashmere, garbondon, flannel, tweed. Cashmere suit costs about 28, garbondon 27, flannel 25, and tweed 25. In fact, and closes a price list. Pop, send me your measurements, length of pants, waist, crotch, sleeve, length, width of back, etc. Send as many measurements as possible. They don't go by different suit sizes like in the States. Mom, if you want a suit, send some measurements. I figure if I got it a little big, you can always cut it down. Please send them with Pop's measurements within the next three months. Bobby encloses a card for some examples of chess, coffee tables, etc. The price runs from $35 up. If interested, please let me know. I guess I'll close for now. Right soon. Say the new house sounds wonderful. Hope you like the neighborhood better. Miss all of you. All my love, Lewis. And that is end of part 15. Hopefully you guys have a good morning, afternoon, or night. And this is me signing off.